This video here is all about fishing poles, but very specific. I'm gonna try to be as specific as I can. And the rods and reels and the line, I'm gonna go over rods, reels, line, leader line, and a few lures specifically targeting bass in creeks and rivers. I'm talking wading, walking, maybe bank fishing, but you are on the ground or in the, in the water, standing on the ground, and you're fishing a creek or a, maybe a river, depending on the size, and you're targeting bass. You're going after maybe smallmouth, a lot, a lot of y'all, maybe spotted bass, largemouth, shoal bass, coosa bass. Uh, there's a lot of different red-eye bass and you know places, but you really, I'm thinking like more of like the smallmouth and the spots. And if you've gone for those in creeks and rivers, you know how strong they are, and how much fun they, they're a blast to catch. So think that kind of fish. Think. Um, from 10 inches, I want to be able to catch a 10 inch one up to a five pounder. Now I've never caught a five pounder out of the creek. I've seen them. I have seen some, some giants in creeks and there's certain parts of the country where there's going to be people that are like, yeah, we catch five or six pounders all day. Most normal people don't fish areas like that. If you have an area like that and you know, it's very special. Maybe you live up north somewhere and you only get to fish at a certain time of the year. But for like in Tennessee and this kind of area around us, Oklahoma, um, Arkansas, Kentucky, Ohio, you know, Georgia, they got a lot of spots down there. Um, shoal bass down in Georgia. You're going to be fishing, you're, you're, you're a good fish. A big fish is a three pounder. That, that's what I would say. That's like a really nice creek bass, even out of a river. A three pound fish is such a strong fish. And if you've targeted those and you've gone for those enough, you've been broke off, you've had uh, lures come unhooked and you have to learn. Now, this stuff I'm gonna go over is things that I've been learning over the last few years. I've really started going for smallmouth bass a lot. And so let's get right into it. I'm gonna go through what I used to use, what and, and still works, to what I've really narrowed it down to, the best rod and reel for this kind of fishing. So I worked with PC Fun for quite a while, a year and a half, and this is one of the most, most uh, favorite rods that I ever used from theirs. This is a 6'8", medium light, extra fast, uh, rod, spinning rod. Now these, all, everything I'm gonna go over is spinning rods. That's mainly what I use and that's the only thing I know. So I'm not gonna go over other stuff. But this is a 6'8", medium fast, or it's an extra fast, uh, medium light rod. And I caught so many fish on this rod and reel setup. And I still like fishing with it. I don't, I don't know why. One thing I don't like about the piece of fence is their rod handle length. And that may be more coming into where I'm kayaking a lot more. A longer rod handle gets in the way. So I'm gonna, when I get down to here at the end, be very specific, but this right here, a medium light, is a great rod and reel if you wanna catch all sizes. But I've kinda gone away from that. Um, also, this is the uh, Abigasia Veritas. It's their 6.9 medium light, really great rod. Uh, it's really fun, I still, I still like using it, um, but maybe more out of a boat, but I'm talking, I'm, I'm still thinking, I'm standing here, I'm casting into water that's flowing, got current, you're fishing in a deep pool, you got rocks all around or trees or brush, and you're trying to get, you're trying to pick out the, I need the best rod and reel. Hold on. All right, I'm back, I got a call from my tax person. I'm hopefully gonna do a video on my taxes soon. I'm trying to get all that done uh, this year. Um, here's another one, this is a Lose, and it's a 6.9, medium light, fast. Uh, and then I just got this one recently, and it's in a video I uh, recently used it. It's a Cast King, uh, it's a 6.10, medium light, fast and um all these rods are good and i've caught lots of really good fish but i've kind of gone away from the medium lights i do like the action i do love it if i'm if i really know i'm going to be targeting a lot of smaller fish but when i when i'm going to these places where i don't want to take a chance on losing a four pound smallmouth, i've moved up to these rods on this side i have five medium all of these are extra fast i think except one which i'll show you that but all of the, that's the key thing. A medium extra fast is where I've really come to where that makes the biggest difference. This right here is the PC Fin Serpent Rod. It's another one. It's a 610 medium extra fast. And I, this rod feels so good. It's really good for the money. If you are looking for one, I don't work with PC Fin no more, but it's a great rod. It's so lightweight. It feels like it's, I think it's a $80 rod. It feels like a lot more uh, from all the other ones I used. I don't like how long the handle is. It gets on my nerves. So if I was to cut that off, I'd probably really like it. But um, so first off, I'm gonna say these. All these rods are six eight to six ten, medium. One of them's uh, uh, just a fast, and all the other ones are extra fast. 
The medium is the power of the rod. Uh, the fast or extra fast or moderate is how fast it bends. I'm not, ex I can't explain it exactly. I'm not a rod builder, but it, it depends on how much it bends up here. Like see how this starts bending right here. A moderate would bend down here. It'd be like more like that. So a fast is like right here. Then extra fast is even higher. What that enables you to do is it has a really, it's still got a soft tip, like a medium tip where you can cast regular size or smaller lures. But when you set that hook, you get right into the backbone a lot faster. So it's almost like a medium heavy, what well, I would compare it to. So when I go to set the hook, boom, I'm right into the hook set, get, taking up the slack and the line or whatever. I, or I usually slack in the line from the current and everything, or if you fish, a, if the fish is down there, whatever it is, you're boom, you're getting right into that, right into the power without having to go really far back. And a lot of times you're surrounded by trees. You don't have a ton of room, so boom, you want that fast action, or at least I do, to get a better hook set and to pin that fish better. I don't use this one much anymore. I do like it. I, I hate to get rid of it. I, it's such a good rod, but I wish the handle was shorter. I wish they, if they ever made shorter handles, I'd probably get another one. This one right here is the only one that is a different than this. this is, I found this at Walmart for $30. This rod right here was a $30 rod at Walmart. It's a 610 medium fast. And it feels really good. Now, all the other rods I'm going to talk about are hundred dollar rods and more, and we're going to we're going to show that. But you don't have to have the super expensive hundred dollar rod, but it does help. So this right here, I, I use this one, I, and I haven't used it much, but I just picked it up because it was so cheap, and it feels really good. It's a loose speed stick from Walmart, and yeah, a six ten is, is the size I want. So if you've picked up on the size, six eight to six ten is where I want to be. I have three rods here. These three are the my favorite three right now. And they're all $100 rods, $100 to $140 rod with about a hundred, around $100 reel. So I'm, I'm looking 200 to $250 combos for these right here. These, these are, uh, are nice. You feel the difference. Um, I used to use a lot of cheaper reels, like the $40 and $50 range. Once I started going up to the $80, $90, $100 range reels, the drag systems are so much better the quality is so much better. When I started getting hundred dollar range rods, the, the, it's so much lighter, the sensitivity is better. So I never thought I'd be the guy, I never thought I'd spend $200 on a combo, but now I have several rod and reels that are $200 combos that I paid for myself. Like um, all these here, I don't think, no, yeah, I bought all this stuff right here. Uh, some of these things, that, some of these over here were sent to me, but all the ones I have right here, I bought with my own money. And I'm actually got a rod being ordered right now Hopefully that'll come in soon that I'm, I'm really wanting to test out. Two rods, this is a, a loose KVD rod. I think a $99 a Bass Pro. I got a Bass Pro Shops um, Johnny Morris reel. That's like a $109 reel, 2000 size reel. This one I have 10 pound fluorocarbon on. I might change that soon, but I was doing a I was testing on it. But look how short the handle is. I like that I, and it's a medium extra fast. This right here in 610, this right here is a ARC 610 medium extra fast um i picked this one up a few years ago and I, I didn't use it a lot and then i've come back to it and i really like this rod don't love the way the handle fits i don't know what it, it's weird something weird but i like how short the handle is i got a uh, a fluger presidential xt reel i got a 15 pound braid with a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader and i use these two quite a bit i interchange the reels sometimes but when i started using these you cannot go, I don't think you can go wrong with this size. Now let's go to the, my one that I've been using the most here recently. And then I'll go over line and leader and stuff. So here we go. I saw it at a fishing show. Uh, it's a Dixie Custom Rods Finesse Series. Now all these rods are usually a finesse rods when they get these specialty. This one is a 6'8". Now this one's a little bit different. This is a 6'8". All the other ones are 6'10". But that's why I say that 6'8 to 6'10". It's a medium extra fast it's a really lightweight this rod was 140 dollars i saw it i picked it up i was like i need that rod i gotta try that out i like how short the handle is uh the grip's comfortable i have a shimano nasi 2500 it's a hundred dollar reel good quality now I, I will buy some more expensive ones in the future i think i have 15 pound braid a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader that's my go-to now i got one if I get this other rod in, I'm probably gonna put 10 pound braid on it. I would suggest 10 to 15 pound braid. 
if you go to 20, it's a little heavy. I have it on my little heavier rods, but it's a little heavy for casting some of these lures. 15 pound does really good and still strong. You might even go to eight pound. I got eight pound on one of those rods over there and I used it and it, it actually feels really good. So I would say 10 to 15 pound braid. I go with a 10 pound fluorocarbon leader. Fluorocarbon is a little bit, supposed to be a little bit better than mono, just it's a better quality. It's a little, it doesn't stretch as much. It's supposed to be better on abrasion for getting cut. So I fish around a lot of rocks. I've had straight, I've fished straight braid before and you'll catch fish. Fish most of the time don't know what line is. They, if they see it, a lot of times if they're hungry, they're just gonna eat. But fluorocarbon is clear and supposedly fish can't see it. Um, braid will cut really quick on rocks. So I try to put, this, this one here is about a six foot leader, but I'll put, I'll usually like tie my knot here and run it out to here. Have a eight to 10 foot leader. Uh, that way if it breaks off, you, you know, you can cut it down or recut, retie and, not, and still have a lot of line on there. Six, six to 10 foot leader line. Um, I tie it with a double uni knot. You can look that up, UNI, but it's a uni knot to uni knot. Cinches down really tight. I do a uni knot on my lures. This right here is a 1 10th ounce Z-Man jig head on a Nico Helgramite. And I have this paired up because I was using them the other day and I caught about 15 rock bass on this setup. I was looking for some little bigger fish, but even rock bass, it's still fun to get them in. And those things thump, thump a lure. So this is a medium, extra fast, like I said, it bends way up high if you can see that. Uh, it's a very sensitive, everything you get as far as quality, the higher quality you go, the more sensitive it's gonna be, the more smooth it's gonna be, the better results you're gonna get. So you might be the guy that's like, I'm not spending more than $50 on a combo. And you, that is fine. You can go out and catch the same fish, but I guarantee you, you're gonna lose a few fish or break off or something's gonna happen and you're not gonna get certain fish that if you have a right setup, you will get. Also, you won't cast as many times, most people. Once, once you go to a nicer, it's so easy to make more cast. It's so, more, it's so much more accurate. You got a better drag, you got a better every, reel, it's easier to reel. So there's so many reasons to, to keep advancing and next year, I'll probably have even more expensive stuff because that's, I love getting into this and like really diving in. So I'm gonna say this right here. Equipment. This so right here is the so best. I'm gonna say this right here. This right here is the best fishing. Fishing. A six eight to six ten medium bass extra fishing. fast. A six eight to six ten medium extra fast. About a two thousand size reel, ten to fifteen pound braid. I go eight to ten pound fluorocarbon leader. You can go heavier or lighter. Um, I can still cast a one fifteen ounce jig head. I can cast my little crankbags. I can cast a whopper plopper like a a 90 size whopper flopper. I can cast, uh, it's very great. My main thing is finesse. So it's awesome for finesse. I'm fishing the Helgramite. This is the main, this is the rod I'm setting up with. If I'm in a kayak, the, I, these are the rods I take with me because I love the action, I love sensitivity. I love what it can do. And that's it. And I got a couple other guys. They're, they're gonna share their rod and reel setups. I try not to go too long, but I blame this on my dad was a pastor and you know how pastors are. And whenever they say they're closing, they got another 20 minutes. So I thought this was gonna be a short, easy video. And then I ramble on about them because I really, I really like it. Hopefully help somebody else out. If you got any other questions or comments about uh, other things that you would like me to make a video on, I will, if I feel comfortable with them. Like I didn't want to make this video last year. I couldn't make this video because I didn't know what I really wanted. You know, hopefully next year I'll learn more and know more, but I really think I've got it dialed into what's a really good setup and what, what works where I can take, this is how I go fishing. This is it. This is how I go to a Creek. I got this wading bag on. Got a couple, eh, quite a few lures in there, but not too much. Maybe a water and a snack. I got one rod. I'm casting and walking and fishing. I'm not bringing two rods. I'm not bringing a medium heavy and a medium light and then my bait caster. I'm bringing this rod right here to do it all, to get all the fish I want. And it has done well. I like to cast and move and keep moving, get to different spots. Sometimes I'll take my bag off and fish an area. Most of the time I'm walking and fishing and walking. Sometimes I'm standing right in the middle of the water and fishing or walking a trail. And if you have extra rods, whatever, it, it slows you down, gets in your way. If you if you tune it down to get you one rod that does uh, pretty much all the fishing you want to do and bring a handful of lures to you know hit all the different ways, maybe you want to hit topwater, and then you're going to go crankbaits, then you're going to go finesse, then you're going to go uh, weightless yumdinger. This rod, rod right here, I feel like will do it all. How's it going today, everyone? My name is Brian. Some of you may know me on YouTube as the Creek Crawler. And John asked me to film a little video, a short tutorial video on what I like to use in the creeks and rivers. But before we get started, 
a little bit background on me i'm an ohio angler fish rivers and creeks all around ohio a lot of skinny water as you see behind me so i'm pushing 33 years old been fishing creeks and rivers basically my entire life started when i was 13 on my own creek and river fishing so i got almost 20 years experience now and i want to go over some of the gear i use when i'm fishing creeks and rivers through all my experiences have kind of led down to this general size of rod reel my line everything that's come down and led me to today so we'll go over my rod real quick i use a 610 medium fast to medium extra fast any one of those kind of powers i feel is the best in my opinion for all the techniques that i use this is the overall in general i can use top water i can use crankbaits i can use the nico helgramite the nico leeches i can use my soft plastics i can use swim baits little swim baits that i like to use in the creeks and rivers so the 610 medium fast and medium extra fast is the awesome rod and get in those close quarters combat situations you're not messing with a long clanky rod and i've over the years i've experienced with 72s 73s and it just it's clunky you get clumsy and when you're fishing really small spaces that i like to fish and john as well you got to kind of narrow yourself down you got to kind of get a little bit more compact so that's why i've chosen this over the years we'll go down to the reel i use the 2500 series reel this is the daiwa kage you don't have to use the daiwa you can use whatever but the 2500 is the best overall for this for this rod setup the 2500 basically will fit your needs for every situation this kage is awesome i've, I've been using it for about a year now um, and it's absolutely did incredible things for me so we'll go over the line I use 10 pound Power Pro braid, the super slick version. I can cast a country mile with these light jigs that we like to use in the creeks and the little crankbaits and jerkbaits and whatnot. So 10 pound braid is what I've really narrowed it down to. And then I'll come down to my fluorocarbon leader. I have about three different fluorocarbons that I use. If I'm, if I'm fishing bigger water, bigger cover, I'm gonna go to a 12 pound fluorocarbon leader. If I'm fishing clear creeks or clear rivers, like behind me, this creek is usually pretty clear in the summer um, after we get all of our spring floods out of the way. But I'll narrow it down. I'll, I'll take it down to about an eight pound, sometimes six pound, depending on the situation I'm fishing and what I'm kind of learning from the fish's behavior on that day. So a six to eight, and then if, if, if I'm fishing bigger water, 10 to 12, it kind of varies. It really does. But anywhere on that spectrum seems to do great. I got my rod reel line set up. Now I'm gonna take you over and show you some of the presentations that I use in the creek. I'm gonna go over the plastic, soft plastics and hard baits that I use here in the creeks and rivers. We'll start out with the soft baits and we're all familiar with the Helgramite and how absolutely devastating that is to the, to the smallmouth and other predatory fish in the creeks and rivers that we fish. If you, if you watch John's channel, he uses the Helgramite a lot. I use the Helgramite, it's basically religion at this point. But another presentation I like to use is the Nico Leech, a really finesse little soft plastic trick worm that you can rig different ways I like to pair it up EWG Ned presentation just like that. You can neck rig it, you can even drop shot it. Another presentation that I like to use, the little swim bait presentation like that. Mimic the natural forage in your creeks and rivers and you can have a lot of success with the little swim bait presentation. I'm also gonna go over the top water lures that I like to use, a little popping bait, a little popper just like that, and a walking bait. This walking bait has been incredible for me. This is a little Mega Bass Dog X Junior. They're kind of hard to find, but you can find them online used at pretty good prices. And usually they come in the mail and they'll have like rusted hooks and stuff. I'll just take, take the hooks off, replace them and put new split rings. And they're just like new. Those little walking baits, I've been using them for a few years now. And <laughs> there's nothing that gets your heart pumping like a big smallmouth blowing up a little topwater bait like that. Another presentation that I like to use is a little crankbait. This is a little Bomber A floating crankbait dives to around two to three feet and then floats to the surface when i'm fishing a little bit deeper sections in a creek or a river i switch i go to some crankbaits try to get down to the bottom hit those rocks bounce off those rocks with the square bill or you can go a little bit deeper with the flat a's but yeah crankbait is definitely one of the one of the things that i have in my bag at all times every one of these that i'm showing you right now is on on me at all times because as a creek angler we don't have access to technology we're not able to sure we can see that a spot's a couple feet deep but we don't have when we're when we're approaching places that are a little bit deeper we have to kind of hit all those different water columns and really zone in on where the fish are hanging out are they hanging out on the bottom are they readily hitting topwater baits my last but not least is a little jerk bait little jerk baits are incredible you can really do a lot of damage with a little jerk bait mimicking a minnow or a shiner i always like to mimic natural forage 
and clear systems sometimes you can have luck with chartreuse but i'm always going i'm always gravitating to that natural color pattern i hope this video helped anybody out if you want to check out my channel it's the creek crawler on youtube i do the, kind of the same thing john does but here in ohio he, he he tears it up everywhere he goes and i kind of branch out and go to different locations as well so i hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit from it and i'll see y'all out in the water <gasps> let's go what's going on guys uh tyler reed with reed angling uh, me and John, you've probably seen some of our videos together. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff as far as striper fishing, Dale Hollow, some creek fishing. I uh, love creek fishing with John. He's pretty much my good luck charm, and uh, we always catch fish together. But we're going to talk setups today. Uh, we just fished for probably four or five hours. We caught a couple. Well, John caught one right off the bat. Uh, it took a few hours, and we got back into some fish. But uh, me and John's creek fishing setups are a little bit different because I'm more bass forward you know, fishing off of a boat. Uh, this is probably a little bit big uh, rod size for a creek. This is a seven foot, um, but I use this this rod on my boat a lot too. So this is a Dobbins Champion 702. Basically, it's a seven foot rod. Uh, it's a medium light and it's on the rod that kind of tells you some of the baits you can throw. Dart heads, shaking worms, shaky heads, tubes and gitsits. Basically, this rod I use in the creek a lot. It's something that can handle the rock bass, the bluegill, the smallmouth, largemouth. Um, like I said, it's a seven foot medium light. This is a 2000 size Shimano reel. It's a Vanford. I've got 12 pound line uh, braid to about six pound leader. Sometimes I'll step it up in the summer. Um, but right now, you know, it's first day of March. Uh, water's real cold. So I like to use a smaller uh, diameter fluorocarbon line. Um, but yeah, today just throw in the little micro jigs that Missile makes. Uh, this is actually a quarter ounce micro football jig. This is actually more of what I would throw uh, on the lake. Um, the micro football comes in a quarter ounce and three eighths ounce. But today I was just throwing the Ike's micro jig, one eighth ounce size. And, and for the creeks, you could go down to one sixteenth even. Um, just a little trailer on the back of it. And uh, yeah, fishing it real slow. They were kind of grabbing it off the bottom. Uh, we were finding fish and, you know, pretty deep pockets uh not a lot of activity today but you know this is the kind of stuff that you got to fish uh in the creeks like i said i i fish a lot of uh boat stuff and and seven foot is about the standard for a rod on a on a boat um but anywhere from the six and a half to seven foot uh length and anything from ultralight to medium but i like to stick with the medium light it gets it done uh might not be what you want to use on the on the creek you might could throw in a little bit smaller of a rod especially seeing you you know using a six foot eight rod you can definitely tell the difference when you're getting into you can definitely tell a difference when you're getting into you know real tight situations so <laughs> all right thanks for watching i don't have a brand that i can tell you go buy this brand but if you find something in that hundred dollar range for a rod hundred dollar range for real you're gonna get something really good quality. Uh, I would, I hopefully in the future will have my, I have a brand that I'm working with that make a rod that I is, you know, specifically made for what I do. I got a couple different sizes that I really want, and there's not a lot of um, people that really focus on a lot of wading and creek fishing, like all the time. People do it, but when people when, like me and a few guys that, or and some of y'all watch that do this all the time you realize how a, you know, a couple inches makes a big difference either in the handle or the rod or the length. I used to like a 6.6, six, and now I really like that 6.8 to 6.10. Like that, that couple inches makes a difference. So thanks so much for watching. Hope this helps somebody out.